Welcome to Unit 4 of the CLPNM Jurisprudence Education Module. In this unit, we will review the standards of practice and conduct related to therapeutic relationships. Professional standards for practical nurses also include establishing, maintaining, and appropriately ending therapeutic relationships. The therapeutic relationship is a professional relationship formed for the purpose of meeting the client's therapeutic needs. The therapeutic relationship is based on trust, respect, empathy, and professional intimacy, and it requires the appropriate use of the power inherent in the nurse's role. Therapeutic relationships have boundaries that distinguish them from personal relationships. There are seven standards in this category. These are the first four therapeutic relationship standards. A therapeutic relationship is one that allows nurses to apply their professional knowledge, skills, abilities, and experiences towards meeting the health needs of the patient. This relationship is dynamic, goal-oriented, and patient and family-centered because it is designed to meet the needs of the patient and family. Regardless of the context or length of interaction, the therapeutic nurse-patient relationship protects the patient's dignity, autonomy, and privacy and allows for the development of trust and respect. Professional boundaries separate therapeutic behavior of the nurse from any other behavior which, well-intended or not, could decrease the benefits of care. The power of the nurse comes from the nurse's professional position and access to sensitive personal information. The difference in personal information the nurse knows about the patient versus personal information the patient knows about the nurse creates an imbalance in the nurse-patient relationship. Nurses should make every effort to respect the power and balance and ensure a patient-centered relationship. When you communicate and interact with your patients in a caring and respectful manner, that builds trust and places their therapeutic needs above your, your interests. And when you remain clear about your role as a professional nurse, you are upholding your standards related to the therapeutic relationship. Avoiding interactions with the client because of personal discomfort, failing to treat clients with dignity and respect, becoming personally involved with the client, taking advantage of an opportunity to benefit personally from a relationship with the client, or abusing the trust inherent in the nurse-client relationship in any other way are all examples of ways that an LPN might fall short of meeting their standards related to the therapeutic relationship. The CLPNM has prepared a practice direction to provide more guidance on this topic. It is available on the CLPNM website. We will now review three therapeutic relationships case scenarios. Please pause this video and determine which standards of therapeutic relationships were breached. When you start the video, I will discuss the scenario. In this scenario, the nurse failed to uphold standards number 30 and number 34. Standard 30 states that practical nurses establish, maintain, and appropriately end professional therapeutic relationships with clients and their families in consideration that the nurse, not the client or family, is responsible for establishing and maintaining professional boundaries. Standard number 34 states that practical nurses ensure that the client's therapeutic needs remain the focus of the therapeutic relationship. The nurse in this practice scenario failed to maintain a therapeutic relationship with the client by making themselves the focus of the nurse-client relationship. The power imbalance inherent in the nurse-client relationship may be made the client uncomfortable or even fearful about setting boundaries. The client may have felt obligated to listen and offer advice. Whether or not that was the case, the client should not have been placed in that position. Next, we'll review another scenario about therapeutic relationships. Please pause this video and determine which standards of therapeutic relationships were breached. When you start the video, I will discuss the scenario. In this scenario, standards 30, 31, 33, and 34 were breached. In summary, these standards state that practical nurses must establish, maintain, and end professional therapeutic relationships with clients while using effective communication strategies and interpersonal skills to demonstrate respect for the client. Practical nurses must also engage in caring actions and have caring attitudes while ensuring that the client's therapeutic needs remain the focus of the therapeutic relationship. 
In this scenario, due to past negative events, the LPN provided the bare minimum of nursing care and she actively ignored and avoided her client during her shift. In this example, the LPN did not establish, maintain, or appropriately end her therapeutic relationship with her patient. She also did not display caring actions or have a caring attitude in her dealings with her patient, Mr. Barber. Sadly, Mr. Barber noticed that his nurse was not engaging with him when he said, you must not like me very much because I haven't seen you all morning. Unfortunately, Kent Nadu, the nurse, chose to be under-involved in Mr. Barber's care because of past experiences, and she was therefore in breach of her standards of practice and conduct related to therapeutic relationships. Remember, nurses must engage in and maintain respectful and professional therapeutic relationships with all clients, regardless of the client's past or current negative behavior. Please pause the video and consider which therapeutic relationship standards were most exemplified by the LPN. When you start the video, I will discuss the scenario. In this scenario, standards 30, 31, 33, 34, and 35 were most exemplified by the LPN. These standards state that practical nurses must establish and maintain professional therapeutic relationships with clients while using effective communication strategies and interpersonal skills to demonstrate respect for the client. Practical nurses must also engage in caring actions and have caring attitudes while ensuring that the client's therapeutic needs remain the focus of the relationship. Had Alexia accepted the financial gift, she would have put her own interests above those of her client. She might also have contributed to a misunderstanding about the nature of her relationship with Mrs. Penner, leading to potential conflict in the nurse-client relationship down the line. Accepting a sizable financial gift from, from someone in a position of vulnerability relative to Alexia's position of power as a nurse would have shown poor judgment and would have been considered professional misconduct. By showing appreciation, respectfully declining, and reassuring the client that the level of nursing care would not change because of declining the gift, Alexia was able to maintain the therapeutic relationship and meet her professional standards. Now that you have an understanding of the therapeutic relationship standards, please move on to the next unit to learn about the standards related to client-centered practice. If you have any questions about this unit, or if you have any other questions about practical nursing practice, please contact the CLPNM for more information.